Hello, this is Sherman Blackwell, Executive Director at Singing River Services. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're so delighted to be able to bring to you information about things that are happening, particularly in Singing River Services and some of the 35 different programs there. Also, ancillary programs that take place in conjunction with Singing River Services, state programs, and things along those lines. For those of you that tune in to this type of program, we certainly do appreciate your feedback, and there has been considerable feedback, and we certainly appreciate that. And the goal of this program is, of course, to inform the community and to let you know about the availability of services that we have here in uh, Singing River Services in our catchment area, because it is a fact that the situation and the ways of the economy and the things that we are facing in this modern society of ours, a lot of people have stressors and needs assistance to get over. Just sometimes it's just a transitory thing, even though we deal with chronic issues with individuals uh, with mental illness and uh, substance abuse and those that have uh, individuals that are have developmental disabilities and hence our program today is going to focus on that as we do from time to time we bring different individuals in from our different programs to remind you of those programs that we have and today on the first half of this program we have uh, Wade Ogletree, who is the uh, director for IDD services here in Jackson County. And Wade, uh, thanks for being here. My pleasure. Glad to be here. Good to have you. Good to have you. Uh, at the pro How long exactly have you been with Singing River Services now? Uh, since early 2009. Okay, early 2009. So mm -hmm. you're about to get baptized into it. Pretty <laughs> good, huh? Yeah. yeah. Wade uh, has worked in our IDD, uh, that is individuals with developmental disabilities and uh, in our Jackson County, working at Singing River Industries, and many of you know uh, that and have heard of that uh, because of the famous crab traps that we make at uh, Singing River Services. First of all, by uh, way of introduction on Channel 7 here, Wade, let's tell our viewers a little bit about your history and how you got involved in working in uh, an altruistic field like community mental health. All right, well, I come from a background working with emotionally disturbed teenagers and as a teacher and a pastor and uh, tried some other things and uh, wanted to get back really to working hands-on with people and uh, uh, there's just no better way than with this group. This is a wonderful work group to work with. They're, uh, they're loving, they're kind, they're really a, sp a special population. Absolutely. Uh, Singing River Industries, tell us, what we talk about it, we know about it, but tell our, our viewers what is Singing River Industries and, and what takes place at Singing River Industries industries and the population that we serve. Absolutely. Actually, I'm really kind of touched by how often I run into people who know very much who we are and, uh, and what we do. But, you know, we work with individuals with intellectual and developmental disability to help them live as uh, normal and productive and enriched life as possible. Um, and that, a lot of that really has to do with, uh, with work. Work defines a lot of who we are. It, it defines a lot of our, our worth for better or for worse. And um, we help them gain uh, vocational skills and we, uh, we have a sheltered workshop where they do a lot on site. We also have job coaches that take them out in the community and help them um, work there in the community um, and hold a job there, le learn the skills, maintain the skills. On site, we do things like build the crab traps, uh, dining packets. Um, uh, we paint fire retardant boards and we have a saw shop. We just built a greenhouse. A lot of stuff going on. Right. If um, someone was interested and has a loved one that may have a, um, a learning, a disability, uh, what would they need to do to talk to you if they would be interested in, in the day program at Singing River uh, Industries? Well, give us a call so that we can 
talk and find out uh, you know where you are. A lot of, of what is available depends on um, you know whether uh, you're part of the Medicaid waiver program or not. And basically, you know Medicaid will pay for a lot of services, but only uh, under a special waiver. Mm-hmm. And so um, you know uh, we'll hook you up with people you need to talk to to. Uh, you know, have your lo- loved one checked out to look into getting onto the waiver waiting list, all those things that are necessary in order for I know, everyone to get the services that they need. Absolutely, and you've hit on a, a very critical word. It's good, you know, there was a day when you know, grants and, and um, payer sources were sufficient to where you could enlarge uh, your, your programs, and we certainly have done that. And, but funding sources are critical. Mm-hmm. Uh, sad to say, but people, even in, even the best people who work in this business, uh, they like they have to get paid because you can't just go down to uh, the grocery store or Walmart and say, well, I work at Singing River Services, and oh, okay, well, you can just do. And so funding is very important, and uh, that's a, something that has been an issue uh, with uh, not only Singing River Services, but the 15 community mental health centers across the state serving some 125,000 people. And we've always encouraged our viewers, if they uh, uh, support the services that we provide, it's interesting that we can find that people can find, legislatures, government can find money for a myriad of things and one thing that I've always said and will never back down from is the fact that when you have a society that you it's okay to have good roads you got to have proper things but when you have a society that is more interested in uh, concrete aspect of this life as opposed to serving individuals that many times cannot help themselves mm-hmm. then something's terribly wrong uh, with that. There's plenty of funding for a lot of different things. And when you take care of the individuals at, at home, then you take care, then you solve a lot of different problems up and down the line. A lot of families are stressed, a lot of communities have stressors because they can't adequately deal with individuals with disabilities and in the state of Mississippi and in other states in the South particularly, this population continues to be underserved but you can contact Wade Ogletree and we will get you we will get you hooked up and evaluated if there is someone that you are interested in looking into our services for learning more about Singing River Services or industries we certainly uh, we welcome you uh, to do that the day-to-day uh, activities Wade, what what will take what takes place at when we you know we say we do this, but what does the typical day look like at Singing River Industries? Well, it really uh, varies largely for you know each individual in in the sense of uh, what kind of work they're doing. Um, they each work you know with the staff to develop uh, certain skills that are identified by a treatment team that uh, they need to work on. Uh, in order to grow and, and, and live a more fulfilled life, they, uh, um, they participate in jobs that they're, they're interested in. They get to choose whether or not uh, they work in these things, whether it's to become part of a cleaning crew, to answer phones, to work in a saw shop, uh, to grow the herbs, to do the other things that we mentioned, or you know, um, you know, for those that, that qualified to get a job out in the community and uh, have a job coach assist them in that. That has been a big part of the expansion process. Uh, like we were talking earlier today, there have been a lot of people that have been involved in this population for a long time, and they have uh, helped with uh, schooling and programs like the Eddie DeSanti Group Home, like Singing River Industries. And we are certainly want to take a pause here for a minute because one of our major partners, the of course United Way of Jackson, County, Jackson, George, Green County, uh, is a tremendous support. And there are so many things that we would not be doing Mm -hmm. if it were not for uh, the United Way and, of course, the United Way and the community at large because individuals in Jackson County are some of the most generous people uh, around. They really do do care. And it's important that the funding 
finds its appropriate channel and source to get where it needs to go. I know there's some challenges. There are challenges every day when you deal with this population. You know, no one's sticking their head in the ground. Uh, individuals, but the good thing about individuals with uh, developmental disabilities living longer these days, mm -hmm. becoming, uh, as you mentioned, very uh, productive in society. Um, and in our closing two minutes here, Wade, is there anything particular that you would like to talk about about Singing River Industries or success stories or anything else? Well, I tell you, um, you touched on a couple of things that. Uh, um, you know, make me think of just one of the reasons I'm so proud of Singer River Services and SRI in particular is that the people we've been able to help that no one else could and no one else would. And a lot of that ties directly back to our help from the United Way, yeah. um, enabling us to help people that didn't ha couldn't have services, didn't have funding from any other source. Um, and but also uh, just uh, you know, over the years we've helped people when there was no funding, and you know. Um, I'm, you know, when you see that sort of stuff take take place, you, you know it makes you feel good about uh, where you work. You uh, th that is so true. Uh, that's an excellent point. Uh, there have been uh, up or down, good or bad, all through the uh, the cuts and uh, the affluent, uh, uh, mostly cuts when you're dealing with uh, government work, but. We have continued to serve, and that's a lot to do with people like yourself and a lot of good staff members at Singing River Services. My guest for the first half of the program today has been Wade Ogletree. He is the director of our IDD services, IDD standing for Individuals with Developmental Disabilities in Jackson County, and has doing a good job along those lines, and we certainly do appreciate you being here today. The second half of the program, we're going to have Miss Pam Powell, uh, who is the director of the group home and also of the day support services, and we're going to talk more about those direct services as we come uh, into what's happening, particularly with the changes, and talk about some of the changes that uh, are happening in the state of Mississippi as it follows the lead of other states and the injunction of the U.S. Department of Justice. So, thanks, Wade. My pleasure. Good to see you. We're going to take a break right here, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk more about services at Singing River. Hello, this is Sherman Blackwell, and welcome back to the second half of today's program. Thank you so much for joining us today. And let me remind you of the number you see on the screen there. Uh, that number is available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It is our mainline number, Monday through Friday, and our crisis line, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our first guest on the program this today was Wade Ogletree, and if you've heard some rumblings in the background, was, uh, there's, of course, some thunderstorms going on. Uh, imagine that at, at this uh, recording. I uh, started to say filming or whatever, I don't know, I'm so out of touch with whatever they do these days, but uh, my guest for the second half of the program is Pam Powell, who is the director of our group home services and day support services. Thanks for being here, Pam. Well, thank you very much you for having me. Weathered the storm and, yes. and, and got in here, and uh, we appreciate you so much. Thank you. We're delighted to have Pam on our staff. She is someone who is very energetic and does a, an excellent job. Pam, tell us a little bit, tell our audience how and why you got into uh, this business. My background really had nothing to do with this industry. Um, I got a, a master's degree in business administration and I went the business end, um, worked for a bank as an auditor, owned a car dealership, did all of those things, but never felt fulfilled. There was always something missing. And as a child, I had uh, a family member who was DD, mm -hmm. developmentally disabled and always wondered how I could make a difference in my cousin's life. 
and never lost that feeling. Never quit wondering how I could make the difference. So um, just by the grace of God, an opportunity dropped in my lap and I started out in this industry in direct care. Worked direct care for a year to see if that was truly what I wanted to do. Um, and then another opportunity dropped in my lap in Texas um, as QMRP. Okay. Moved to Texas and did that for a while. Got a lot of opportunities there and moved on up the ladder and, and moved back here. And, and now I'm with you guys and loving every minute of it. And been here a year now. A, a year over. this month. Yeah. yeah. Good, doing doing an excellent job, and has come in as the director of our uh, group home. Now, group home probably has a lot of different meanings for a lot of different people, and the population uh, that we serve, of course, certified by the ADA, the American Disabilities Act, and individuals with developmental disabilities. Mm -hmm. uh, what what is the the function of the the group home? Well, the purpose of the group home is to house these individuals and teach them what they need to know to function independently uh, out in the community. So we teach them their daily living skills, how to take care of themselves, how to cook for themselves, how to do their laundry, um, you know, everything that they would need to know if they were living out in a house, assisted living, apartment, whatever the case may be, there are certain things that you do from the time you wake up in the morning till you go to bed at night that you and I take for granted and we just do it and never think a thing about it. But these individuals actually do not know how to do that. They do not know how to take care of themselves, and we teach them that. Right, and they have challenges that, uh, that, that many folks do not. And as it was alluded to uh, earlier today, we were talking about this population and the population and being underserved. Uh, there's certainly more need uh, in uh, society, not only locally here, uh, but across our nation uh, to, to serve the population because there are some successes that come out of this. We're talking about individuals who uh, successfully um, uh, make a contribution to society. Mm -hmm. not, not just that society allows them a place, which it should, but, it all, but they make successful contributions to society. And that's a very important part of, of the group home and you also you have another hat that you wear and now we're talking about day support services and day support services are something that is directly coming out of if you will in a more definitive way because of the changes that have been uh, required by the U.S. Department of Justice that has come to the state of Mississippi and been involved in the state of Mississippi for uh, over a year as they have been to other states mandating uh, certain changes, some good changes. That is that individuals uh, must be mostly served in the community where it is appropriate. And there will always be a need for conventional type services, but uh, it is uh, true that uh, Mississippi has reached that point, has got that uh, part satisfied, and now the goal is, the data is someone living in the community, working in the community, and known in that community. The support circle continues to grow and expand. What is, when we talk about day support services, Pam, what, what does day support mean? Day support, uh, means that, all right, let's, let's do a continuation of the group home, for instance. These individuals learn how to function daily. You do, and that's mostly in the home, what we do in the community. You know, we teach them how to buy groceries and things like that. We take it a step further in day support. And they have classes. I wrote a really structured curriculum that they follow. And it's, it's the classes that they really would not get 
if they just went to a work activity type program. Okay. So say for instance, I'll give an example. Uh, if, if an individual has anger issues, um, then they are going to benefit greatly from the socialization skills class that we have. Um, I wrote a curriculum for that, but we do a lot of role playing group activities in that class where um, I might push some buttons and with that I get to teach that person the difference between assertive communication and aggressive communication. What's acceptable out in the community and what is not. And what you would need to do if you went out to apply for a job, your communication has to be appropriate there as well. And that's just one example, but in all of our classes we do a lot of group activities, whether it's small group, large group, one-on-one uh, -on -one role playing, um, we do money management where they learn to write checks and, and deduct that amount from their check register. And, and then we go out in the community and we get the bank to show us the behind the scenes running of a bank. What actually happens to that money once it's deposited. So it's a lot of community and, and we're going to um, teach them about the election that's coming up. I have a, a cubicle that's been brought in and I'm actually going to set up a little voting poll. So, and we do have some that are registered to vote. Right. They are, are confused about it, so I'm going to set up a mock voting booth so that when they get there to vote, they're not scared and they know what's what's going to be facing them. That may be good to do just in the community at large. I know. A lot of people <laughs> are, in, are intimidated by that. Basically what I hear you say, Pam, is that we fundamentally you're talking about communication. And I know we were talking earlier that, mm -hmm. there, that you've had some, some real uh, breakthroughs with individuals who would be nonverbal uh, in their communication that have begun to interact. Right and to a little more dynamically. Yes, actually I do have one individual that um, before he came over to the day support program would just yell out is the only audible noise you heard. And now in, in classes I can ask a question and point it directly to him and say his name and he will say yes or no. So he's paying attention, he is trying to communicate with me, and it may not be the correct answer, but that's not what is important right now. Um, it's the, the communication and the interaction between the two individuals. If this business that we're involved in is not about communication, then it's not about anything else, you know. It's, uh, it's about, has to be about that. This is very informative, and my guest uh, has been Pam Powell, who is the director of our group home here at Singing River Industry, uh, at Singing River Services, Region 14, and also the director of the Day Support Program. If you would like more information about what that is and about who that specifically is designed for and who that may help. Uh, you can certainly call us at the number that you see on the screen there, that number. We will forward that information to, if you like something or is inquiring about Singing River Industries with Wade Ogletree or Pam Powell, we'll be glad to get you uh, that information because we've uh, had some, some good success. There are a lot of challenges that are going on there every day. Every day. Uh, every day. And, as people like yourself, Pam, and people like a lot of the nearly 200 individuals that work at Singing River Services to make a difference. So thank you for tuning in today. We certainly do appreciate that. And the way it's sounding here, we're going to have to cut away for a weather break here. I think <laughs> it's, it's, if you're hearing that across the, uh, the communication here. But thanks for tuning in. This is Sherman Blackwell. Uh, we're going to look forward to seeing you again next week with another special guest.